So here's just a quick sketch of some rough dimensions of the actual table I'm going to build. So there's the top, there's the legs, and these will squash down the side of the table. So it should sit fairly low profile, which is what I want. A few dimensions, it'll be seven feet by two feet. So seven feet long, two feet wide, and then I'll actually come in here later and build some extensions here and on this side so I can drive my snowmobile up on top of the hoist also. So now you kind of see what I'm gonna go ahead and build. So I'm gonna get some metal cleaned up and get it cut up and we'll start gluing this thing together. So what I've done is I've gone around and I've packed each and every corner in a couple spots. And then I measured it to make sure it wasn't, you know, twisted or diamond shaped. So it's squared up. And what I've done here is I've put just a piece of scrap metal across it diagonally. And that's going to help it from heat working when I finish weld each corner. So I'm going to go ahead, finish weld each corner, and then I will cut that piece off and eventually use that for a cross member in the top of the table. All right, so I got the uh, top piece all welded up, all ground smooth, and it's looking really pretty. Now all I gotta do is cut the legs and show you where to mark them, so let's get after that. So I have the four legs all cut out. These are six foot four inches long. So now my next step is I've got to figure out on the inside, there's got to be, let's see here, the pivot on two of them, and then on the two with the pivot, I've got to have a wheel at the end, and this will go on the ground side, and this will go on the top of the table side, and then in the middle will be the pivot to where the X goes, if that makes sense. So, I'm gonna do a little measuring, get some holes drilled in here, machine down the pipe, weld into there so it doesn't crush it when you tighten the bolt down and then get the wheel put on it and see if we get this thing set in the top of the table. So I got the first hole punched through the lower legs that goes in the top and there's my bushing still got to clean it up so we can weld to it but it drops in Really nice, actually. Fairly tight, which is good. That's kind of how we want it. And then, as you'll see, I'll come around and probably TIG weld those in. I'm not sure. But uh, at least weld those in on both sides and then drop the bolt in there. That way, when you tighten it up, it actually doesn't crush the tube. It tightens up against the crush sleeve and it doesn't disform the tube. So that's what we're after. Now all I gotta do is do the same thing to this one. We'll bolt it in after I get holes punched in that. The same thing done to that. And then we can start on the centerpiece. Gonna go down, swing it, don't you forget! I've gotta find a new purpose. Something actually worth it. I wanna look in the mirror and like what I see. I'm sick of feeling so worth So as you can see, got them all TIG welded in, and I've gone through with my grinder and I've buffed them all flush. So don't want any weld exposed on it because these are gonna have to basically be right up against each other with a flat washer for a spacer for them to pivot. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of them buffed up and we'll get them thrown in here and see if we can get some wheels on this thing. Okay, so I have the upper roller installed on the inside arm on the right hand side. 
as you can see there. And what that will do is that will put pressure on the back of the table to lift the back of the table. Hey bud. And I'll show you how it's gonna work. I have the other one here. So I've drilled a hole through this side and built an L bracket to support it. And that will go through like that. Tighten the nut on the inside. And then I'll go ahead and weld this in like I did on the other one. And we will repeat that on the lowers to roll across the ground. And that will give us our rollers to make the table lift. Okay, so there it is. It's pretty much all fabricated. Um, about the only thing left now to do is figure out how I'm going to uh, raise and lower this thing. So, I think I have that figured out. Let me show you what I'm gonna try to make work. And if it doesn't work, I'll go to plan B, but I think it's gonna work rather nice. So this is what I bought. I bought one of these Badland Harbor Freight 1500 pound winches. And the way I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna mount this towards the front on the top, underneath the floor, basically, of the hoist and run the cable to the back arm and be able to hit the button. And as it tightens the cable, it will close the legs together, which will in turn rise the hoist. So I'm gonna see if I can get this thing mounted up and uh, we'll go from there. So I've got the winch all hooked up and I've got it temporarily hooked here until I can get to the hardware store because I want to get a uh, snatch block and I want to double it back to the other side just so it kind of slows it down a little bit going up and just a little bit more lifting power, not that it's going to need it, but uh, I've ran it up once and I've got some issues. I've got to cut this middle plate here and slide it forward so it actually raises the hoist up about another inch and a half to two inches because it's putting it on too much of a bind to pull it together and but once it gets it past there it's fine so let me show you what I got going on. See how it's kind of got that hard, hard lift first. So I've got to raise it up a little bit because the angle of the arms are not steep enough. It's actually pulling against itself rather than pulling towards itself on the lifting arm. So I've got to raise it up probably two inches, but you know what? If that's the only problem I really have had with this so far, I feel pretty good about it because I'm no engineer by any means. So I'm gonna go ahead, cut that uh, bracket out that kind of sets the ride height of this thing so to speak, and uh, see if that fixes it. And do a few things on mounting the winch. I'm not super happy with that because it pulled so hard it actually kind of twisted the bracket on it, which not a huge deal, but you know, might as well fix it. So anyways, I'll get after that and let's uh, see what happens after we do that. Hopefully it fixes it. Okay, so I have the winch rewound. So I loop it from the winch back to the back, back to itself, and back to the back again. So I've doubled it up. Actually, I guess one, two, three, tripled it up. So that did two things. It helped the lifting power, and it actually slowed the winch down because this thing was just too fast. But I did have to raise the whole lift about two inches, which, I mean, isn't a huge deal. If I was doing road bikes or something like that, it'd be kind of a bigger deal. But where it's just, you know, it can be just for dirt bikes. Uh, it really doesn't matter to me. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna show you how this thing goes up and down and uh, show you how well it works.
So the nice part about this lift is maxed height on this thing, which is actually way overkill, but it sits at 44 inches from the ground. So, I mean, that's, that's way taller than I'm ever gonna need working on a bike. I mean, I was gonna be really happy if it would have been about 32 inches, but 44 inches, that's not bad. So the next step on this hoist is I'm gonna come along here and I'm gonna buff down these welds right here because I just went down to the local steel yard and I had them cut me a top for this thing. And what I'm gonna be using is 14 gauge steel flat. I didn't do diamond plate or anything like that because I'm actually probably gonna leave this raw. I haven't decided yet. I may paint it, but I want it fairly slick because I may fabricate on top of this table. Well, more than likely, I will fabricate. So, I'm gonna go ahead, get these uh, welds buffed down so it sits nice and smooth across here. And we'll go ahead and get that thing installed. So have you ever felt betrayed? Which is how you see things. Realize something needs change. Cause I know you got me I'm gonna wipe this down and degrease it and go ahead and mark a few spots where I need to plug weld to the cross members in the middle and then we'll come along the edges and I'll stitch weld about every six inches or so on the outside and the top will be done on this thing and then we can build the ramp or the clamp for the front tire. So I'm gonna get cleaning this thing up and get it installed. I learned a long time ago that working with flat sheet metal when you do rosette welds is when you're center punching flat thin sheet metal like this, you don't want to use a hammer and a regular old center punch because when you do, it'll actually leave a dent inside of the sheet metal. So what you do is you use these spring loaded Before I get welding these in, I'm going to show you a little trick that I learned from my father-in-law years ago. So if you've got a surface that you've got to weld to and you want to keep as much weld slag off of the surface as possible, take an acetylene torch and get it really sooty and just cover this a little bit with some soot and that will actually create a bit of a protect protective layer from the slag from sticking to the bare metal. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then we'll get welding this together. So as you can see, after sooting the top of the material, all these little slag pieces right here that would have more than likely stuck to it, just wipe away now. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the edges cleaned up just enough to where I can mark where I need to do my stitch welds. And I'm gonna stitch weld all the way around the top of this thing and the top's gonna be done. And then I'll take some brake cleaner and all the soot will just wipe right off like it never even happened. All right, it's all welded up. So as you can see, there's a few spots where I didn't quite get enough soot when I welded it. But for the most part, it's, uh, it's pretty clean really. Got a couple really bad spots right here on the edge where I wiped it you know, down with a rag to weld the edges, but that's okay because I'm gonna buff these up just a little bit anyways. And I'm gonna buff these up a little bit. But down in the middle, there's next to nothing, so I'm really pleased with that. So I'll get these buffed up and we'll move on to the uh, next part. Good morning, my dirt bike people. So, beautiful morning. Got my black bean soup out here and it's a beautiful Saturday. So, that means I'm back on the bike lift project. So, today's agenda is I'm going to get the, there, gonna get the uh, front tire clamp built and the ramp built and I'm gonna see if I can decide what I'm going to use for a locking mechanism to you know hold it up and down just for just for safety you know 
But anyways, I'm gonna get after the tire vise, so let's get going. So this is kind of, you know, just sitting up there. Nothing's really tacked into place. So what I've got going on is this side will remain stationary and I'll actually bolt this through the top of the table and I'll weld this piece like so and then drill a hole here and bolt it there so this will be removable. And then on this side, I'll do a similar thing, but coming from here to here, I'll actually have a crank to actually pull this in on this side to tighten it up. So I'm gonna go ahead, get these tacked together, get this drilled and mounted, and then we'll start on the uh, cranking mechanism. So what I'm gonna use there is just some regular old three quarter inch all thread and some smaller two inch tubing that will slide inside of there. And then this end will eventually weld here and pull it across and squeeze the tire. So let's get after it. Now what I'll do is I will take this back apart and on this uh, threaded rod on the inside, I'll actually drill through it this way and put either a uh, tension pin or maybe a quarter inch bolt. And then on this side, I'll mount my handle and both of those will keep the rod in place. So when I turn it, it's actually gonna force this to move in and out. And then I'll weld this to the foot of the clamp and this to the top of the table and we'll have us a functioning clamp. So I uh, rolled the bike up in the hoist and uh, went to go turn, tighten down the front wheel and found its first uh, problem. So let me show you what I found and uh, what I'm gonna do to remedy this. The reason I don't have it on film is because my fat fingers didn't hit record and didn't catch it, but that's okay. So let me show you what I got. So what I found was one, these are not tall enough to grab the center of the front of the tire and that was keeping the tire from moving this way and so I've got to lengthen the clamp up about five inches and then the other thing is is I need a bigger footprint here to go along the sidewall and along the base of the tire so I've got this uh, plate this is six inch plate and I've got it cut out at the 15 degrees, just like the bottom one is. And I'm actually gonna take and add about a half inch spacers in between here and the plate to close this gap up just a little bit because once this gets clear out to where it needs to pinch on the tire, it's actually starting to uh, fold down, not fold down, but it's starting to droop a little bit and it's, it's catching here. So. I should have made this just a little bit longer, but I didn't want it to stick out much past the hoist because I didn't want to bump into it when I was walking. So I'm going to get these cut out, get these tacked into place, and we'll try this thing again. Yeah, that's not bad at all. I mean, let's face it, anytime I'm really going to be working on the bike, I'm going to have straps coming down to it just because, you know, safety-wise, it's probably not a bad idea, but uh, that works out pretty well. Pinched in there pretty good. Happy with that. So let's see if this thing will go up and down like it's supposed to. the other day about the bike table I just lifted my 500 up and uh, 
it seemed to work pretty good. I've gone ahead and I've drilled some holes in the very front of the table to, you know, just a simple way to put some tie downs on the front forks just to stabilize it a little bit. And it's actually been a couple weeks since that last video and I've used this thing quite a bit. And there's a few things about it that I'm just not certain I love. And so I'm actually not going to finish this right now in this video. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use this table for a couple weeks and change things as I find that they're, see how do I put it? I'm gonna change things so when I find things I don't like, I can change it and it's not already been painted. So right now I'm gonna go ahead, put the 250 on there and I'm actually gonna do some service work on it, but uh, that's gonna be the end of this video. And I'll make another one as I update what I've done to it and actually painting it or powder coating it. I haven't decided yet. So anyways, I'm gonna get the uh, bike put up here. And as always, I appreciate you guys all watching and the support you give me. And if you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe, turn on your notifications and like the video. And if you guys have built these before, make sure you comment and I'd love to know what you've done different or what you would have done different on this build. So anyways, I appreciate it. Thanks for watching.